How can we heal from wounds that are generations deep? How can we find freedom in a country that continues to traumatize? How do you keep your heart open? Love is the answer. How can we realize the promise and experience life, liberty, and the pursuit of joy? Smudging is a spiritual practice involving the burning of a bundled herb, usually sage, to create a smoke that purifies a space or a person. It finds its roots in cultures worldwide, including Native American, Chinese, Hindu, Japanese, and African traditions. It's even made its way into organized religion. For millennia, indigenous cultures have utilized smudging for cleansing and purification purposes. In Native American culture, smudging is believed to cleanse the body, mind, and spirit, with the smoke carrying prayers to the Creator and removing all negative energy. A significant practice in the African diaspora is smudging. Herbs like sage and palo santo or incense are burned to create aromatic smoke. This practice is believed to cleanse the energy, repel negative entities, and invite positive energies. Smudging transforms a physical act into a sacred ritual, connecting individuals with their ancestral wisdom and their own divinity. What can we learn from the ancient practice of smudging to clear our thoughts of negativity? Smudging would be an excellent practice, but what kind of thoughts are we trying to eliminate, trying to disperse? What negative entities are around us in thought form that need to be cleansed? Well, a lot of the negativity that we experience comes from the media. Much of the media is fear-based, wanting us to be afraid and to categorize groups so that we can be pitted against each other to create more and more fear. I remember traveling outside of the United States and feeling a sense of freedom when I left because I felt like I was leaving the fear bubble. The fear bubble are all of the negative things that we're fed on a daily basis that keep us in fear and it becomes our new normal. It's not just that we are fed horrible negative news media feeds, but it's also the way the story is shaped, intentionally victim blaming. Victim blaming can be defined as someone saying, implying, or treating a person who has experienced harmful or abusive behavior, such as a victim of a sexual violence, like it was a result of something they did or said, instead of placing the responsibility where it belongs on the person who harmed them. And we need to shift our focus from the victim to the perpetrator and begin to ask why they thought their actions were acceptable. Now to the Trayvon Martin case, the newly released video and eyewitness reports about the struggle in the moments before that gunshot rang out. ABC's Matt Gutman has been analyzing this new evidence all day. A first look at how that fateful night began for Trayvon Martin, buying Skittles and iced tea at the 7-Eleven. You see, it starts with our thoughts. And if our thoughts are toxic, we have to ask, well, why are they toxic? And where is that influence coming from? The news media in particular are not exempt from prejudice 
or spreading racist propaganda. It further skews our senses of of what social groups are worthy of positive attention and which ones are demonized and villainized in our culture. Are you following them? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. I'm coming to you today because I wanted to talk about the effects of implicit bias and racism. There's been an increase in depression among people of color. There have been violent incidences where people of color have lost their lives based on someone judging them as being dangerous or not worthy of living because of the color of their skin or also what they've been wearing. Uh, For example, we saw hoodies became like a symbol of danger if they're being worn by people of color and people have lost their lives. And so sometimes we see this depression and it's like, how do you respond to it? Well, today I have someone that would like to discuss this issue and they're feeling sad, depressed, and his name is Kashan. I am Kashan, and I don't want to be judged by the color of my skin or what I'm wearing. I like to wear hoodies. I'm not dangerous, and sometimes it makes me feel sad because people hate for no reason. They just, like they've been told to hate. That's right, Kashan. Um, you know, in the in the news, uh, if you watch television and social media, it's like campaigns against uh, people of color and they're done in subtle ways. Like the police reports will put uh, a picture of a suspect having been charged with a crime but they'll put his picture on TV and people do generalize and they see a person of color on the screen and they'll think, oh, well, all blacks or all Puerto Ricans are are like that or Haitians uh, don't deserve uh, the best or, you know, whatever it is, we make these assumptions. So how does it feel like when you're walking down the street and you, you, encounter someone with, you know, a bias, like they're prejudging you. Uh, It makes me feel sad and scared and mad all at the same time. And I like my hoodies and people follow me around the store and I don't like that because I don't steal. And I just don't like it. I wish people would love, just love each other. Can they do that? My intention is to provide a sacred space for healing. My 13 year old nephew came to me from Brooklyn, New York how some people with disabilities aren't like conscious or they don't know they have a body. Sometimes I think I'm one of them and it they're like, I'm not really me and uh-huh. I'm one of them, but I just think that this is what's going on. And you know how sometimes like people look at you funny or whatever, it's cause they know that you're like, uh, whatever, not conscious or, you know, have a disability. And it's just because they're aware, but you're not. That's why they're like, like, you know? And it's yeah. like you're living in a dream? Mm-hmm. Like none of this is real. Yeah, and you don't even, some people don't even know. That it's not real. They think it's real. Mm-hmm. But you have a feeling it's a dream. Yeah. It's only a dream, like the Matrix. 
It's all a dream. But make it the best dream. Yeah. Embodies very simple love, joy, laughter, food, atmosphere. Uh, the love of life, all of that is there, and it's all right here. But because of the societal uh, distraction, we step into energy fields that may not be the most beneficial for us. So that is what I'm really trying to really promote in these times to the young hearts. Be in love, be in joy, be in laughter, be in food, be in everything that's going to bring in that wonderful clarity and enlightenment for you. And to live in many worlds simultaneously. And that is key. When trauma is present, it's a person's natural reaction to want to escape from it, to find safety in their environment somehow. If they can't escape physically, then mentally and spiritually there is a detachment from the body. In Kuala, a part of the Yavapai and Havasupai tribe, shares his medicine with my nephew as he uses smudging sacred sage to cleanse any negative thoughts and concepts about himself. Terming and ceremony that they say you are felt. No words are necessary. The energy of frequency is exchanged. So the term in the tribe is walk amongst them. No purpose, just walk amongst them. That energy that is innocent, you're gonna feel that. They're gonna feel that within you. And it's not that we have to go into huge discussion. It's just that we have an exchange that is ancestral, a uh, ceremonial terming for just feeling the feelings that are within. The two fingers, present your two fingers. This is symbolic of duality within you, earth is sky, flesh is spirit. The essence of the you that is dual, bring that into the embrace of divine source and hug. The, whole, the harder you hold this connection, the symbology is that you're asking divine source to see you, watch you, protect you, take care of you. Close your eyes for just a moment. Divine source, see us, hear us, bless us, heal us, and allow for us to awaken in the best way possible. Open your hands and just repeat after me. After each word, create a, a clockwise circle. Body. Body. Earth. Earth. Sky. Sky. Send that to the cosmos. Body. Body. Earth. Earth. Sky. Sky. Rub your hands together and breathe in body. Body. Breathe in earth. Breathe in sky. On to the left of the side again, sanctify. Sanctify. Purify. Purify. Below, amplify. Amplify. Magnify. Magnify. Both hands, master. Masterfy. Let me present a drum. Asking for permission now. Le khe ete dalasos baj baj yova zotso no namito gudgi. Clockwise turn all the way down. Clockwise the other. This is just a gesture of asking for permission. Watch me, see me, take care of me, protect me, do all things for me so that I don't step into the to a shadowed pathway. Okay, you can get into the shade. Our intention here is of respect. The abundance that is there, 
Let respect be the lead in bringing this in to the wellness for each one of us. Gratitude turn. Beneath our grandmother Juniper, our intention here is in healing. Our calling upon the abundance that is right there for our taking, let healing be a very strong part of the use of this abundance. The intention here is in embracing diversity. Diversity that is there in all forms. Abundance that is there, let it be in as many diverse ways as possible and bringing in the wellness, the healing, the protection, and the abundance for all that are the carrier. what you're doing so what I'm doing this is a spiritual cleansing okay so I am clearing out all the energies the low vibrational energies in Harlem putting a blessing on the community so I do this every day I come out and, and this is also called aura cleanse when you go around someone's body it's, it's an aura cleanse to cleanse the aura of any energy that's on them so I usually do two blocks and I keep the pot on all day because people are overwhelmed and yes. they come in and just want to Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm doing. Yay.
Dr. Carmen Smith. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, but this isn't the normal social work wardrobe. I'm here in this sacred place. Healing energy is all around us. And we need healing energy because of the negative, toxic influence that we have or distractions that are on our television, in our families, and in our environment. We're all exposed to it, whether it's racism or blacks against whites or Democrats against Republicans. It's all of this conflict and it affects everybody. So everyone needs healing, including my nephew, kids. It affects their self-esteem. It affects how they see themselves and also how the collective sees them. And so I use ancient practices like the labyrinth, sound healing, and smudging, and so many other practices that can heal and release this negative energy. And this negative energy, I feel freedom every time I leave this country because I'm leaving the fear bubble. The fear bubble is all around us and we all need to drop into our authentic self. You know, my generation grew up with three little girls that were bombed in a church, the assassination of Martin Luther King, so much trauma. This generation, my nephew's generation, is growing up with Trayvon Martin, the lockdown, George Floyd, all of these negative influences. So calling on the ancestral healing is important right now. And so right now I invite you to release all the negative energy, all the negative propaganda, all of the crazy thinking and the toxic thinking that keeps us stuck in fear. We release it out and what we gather into ourselves is our authentic love, our compassion for each other, knowing that we're all interconnected and we bring that in as we do the sacred clockwise turn. Releasing all of that negative toxic thinking that keeps us separated. And we return to the love that we are. Love you. I feel like I love me, I feel, I feel I feel like I love me, I feel, I feel I feel like I love me, I feel, I feel I feel like I love me I feel, I feel The earth, the wind, the stars Bye.